8th of May 1970. And what a great movement that was for the community. What a great outcome for community speaking out. And it's appropriate that we're speaking about free speech on a day like this. It's also 65 years since the end of the Second World War, at least in Europe. And it was the end of the war in Europe which led to the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights just three years later, over which an Australian Attorney General, Doc Evatt, presided. He was the President of the United Nations when the Universal Declaration was passed unanimously. But since then, there's only one country in the Western world which has not acknowledged in its laws the rights expressed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And that's Australia. And it was just a couple of weeks ago that Kevin Rudd, in one of his uh, series of backflips, said we weren't going to have a Human Rights Act in Australia, which would have protected the right of free speech in this country. At the moment, there is not a right protected in our law of free speech. There is in Victoria to a limited extent, but we need to have comprehensive protection of, of the right of freedom of expression. Well, why does it matter, free speech? It matters because in a democracy, if people can't speak, if their voices are silenced, then we'll never learn from the community wisdom of different voices. Some people say, well, we can't have offensive voices. We don't want to be offended by free speech. If that had happened, what would have, what have been the situation with, with women's suffrage? The suffragettes spoke out and they caused offence. And if they hadn't done so, we would have stayed back in the dark ages. The only way we move forward and grow and develop is hearing different ideas. Now, words matter. They can offend. They can frighten. They can be very challenging. And they can also inspire. And we often, often it will be the same words that hurt and inspire different people. We haven't found a way to silence the bad and have the good. We've got to hear it, hear the debate about it, or we will never grow from the sharing of ideas. Community isn't some ether that wanders around in the atmosphere. Community is the communication that we have with each other. And if you, if you stifle the communication, you stifle community. Well, down here in uh, Barclay Square, we're seeing something that's all too common. We're seeing the corporatisation of public space. Yeah. We've had many examples now. We've had the example at South Bank, they said it's private, private development at South Bank, so we're not letting anyone take any photographs. Here is one of the places where tourists go and congregate, and they had security officers telling them, no, 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 you can't take that photograph. Well, in the end, that was that was ridiculed away. But you have to, we had the fighter campaign about it. Look at Yarra Park down at the MCG, handed over to the MCG so that they can continue their parking. But also with laws now permitting them to stop any placards or banners or public statements that they disagree with from being used in what is in fact a public park. Same with Barclay Square. People go there as part of their daily business to shop and do the various things that they need to do as part of being in this community. Now, if corporations want to have shops, that's fine. We understand that that's, that's what they do. But don't you stifle our community. Don't you tell people that you can't have a stall. You can't have an expression of views. You can't have the community interacting and exchanging ideas. In 1917, some anarchists in New York put out some leaflets. They were distributing leaflets. And they call, called for a change in the, an overthrow of the government of the United States. Here they were, 
people just on the streets of New York handing out leaflets. They were charged with treason. And the case went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. The, the uh, United States and Abrams is the case for you lawyers here. And these guys got 20 years jail for handing out leaflets. And there were two dissenting judgments in the Supreme Court. And they're great judgments. And in fact, those two dissenting judgments have been the um, pivotal voice on free speech for the rest of the 20th century in the United States and elsewhere. And one of them was Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, who talked about the marketplace of ideas, the free trade of ideas. Now, isn't that ironic when we're thinking of Berkeley Square, a marketplace where they don't want any ideas at all? Give us free speech because without free speech, we will not have a full and flourishing community. When our young people come to want to participate in public life, they should be able to do so freely. So many young people don't even bother to vote or participate because they think, well, why bother? And too often we're saying to people, consume, conform, or get lost. And how much richer we could be if we let free speech flourish in our community. Thanks, Sue, and everyone for all